and today we will uh, like to talk about some some uh, what might look basic elements of Flexi, but I'm sure uh, all of us need a refresher from time to time, and hopefully we learn something new. Uh, I want to talk about the Flexi workspace, basically designer workspace. When you open Flexi first time. Uh, and hopefully everybody sees my screen, you will see uh, basic elements of the workspace. And I'll just go briefly through all of those, and then I will go into details how you can customize all of this, change it, and make it the work best for you and your application. Okay. So right on the top, when my mouse is, that's what we call a main menu, where you have option to access all of the tools in the menu. File, edit, view, arrange, text, FX, bitmap, windows, and the help. Uh, underneath that, you will see, and on the left-hand side, our toolbars. The one on the top is called standard toolbar. It works with the documents. You have file, open, save, import and then some other sending jobs to print, to cut. On the left-hand side, we have a, a main toolbar and a view toolbar. Those are three toolbars that will open uh, when you start your Flexi first time if you're working in your default workspace. We're going to work with the toolbars and show you how you can change this, uh, put some new bars on, uh, rearrange it, and uh, make that uh, workspace your own. Right underneath the toolbars, we have a ruler. Ruler is showing on the left-hand side and on the top. Then on the bottom, is uh, there is a, a swatch table. Uh, we'll talk about customizing swatch table, opening different swatch tables. Uh, underneath that is a status bar. If you notice when I'm moving my mouse, it will show me um, information about the object I have my mouse on. If I'm on the artboard, it will show the coordinates where my mouse is uh, currently positioning. On the right-hand side uh, is another toolbar, what we call a cloud page. And I'll show you uh, some of the tips uh, how you can uh, make that work, what resources to use, uh, how to close it if you do not uh, want to see it all the time. Okay, so these are all the basic elements uh, of the workspace. Uh, the first thing that I'd like to talk is artboard. When you open Flexi first time, and I will zoom out so you can see it better, you see this artboard uh, in the middle. And um, where my mouse is now pointed, it's the edge of the artboard, and it's called uh, basically document border. If uh, nothing is selected, if I don't have any objects on the screen, I can go to Design Central, and I move it close to the screen. And you can see the dimension of this artboard. We have created. Uh, many different standard sizes for the artboard that you can go in and, and change and pick some from the list. I'll just go to some of those. Uh, if you go to letter, you'll see that's 8 uh, by 8.5 by 11. And you will notice that Flexi will zoom into that artboard, uh, zoom to the page. Uh, we can go to legal, that's 14 by 8. Our default, I believe, is uh, architecture D. And that would be 36 by 24. When you're working with the artboard, uh, basically it's used so when you're designing a banner or designing a sign, a certain size, you can use that area uh, basically better to, to, to constrain yourself, to have a visual border of what you want to design. Now, all that said, uh, you will always or often you will be designing something that it's not in our default uh, on the list of the sizes. That's why I have option here to go to custom. And the custom, you can change this. You can set any size that you want. Let's say I want something that it's going to be um, 
4 by 4 feet. I will type 48 inches by 48 inches. Okay. And here is my artboard now. If you look at the ruler on the top and on the side, it's exactly 48 uh, by 48 inches. If this artboard is something I will be using often, I can go further and say uh, add it. And I can save it uh, in my menu. And I can call it 4 feet by 4 feet. I'll add a little space here so it looks better. And I click OK. Now when I'm working with my artboard, every time I go to uh, my Flexi, I will have that item on the menu. And I can add as many of those as I want. Uh, if you, and many of you work with the different design programs like Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw, I want to point into one difference between those programs and Flexi. When you're working in Illustrator and you're creating a design, uh, you need to send it to print or to cut it. That design needs to be positioned inside that page, the artboard. Otherwise, it will not save or it will not print completely. When you're working with Flexi, and I will zoom out, you can have objects anywhere on the page, anywhere in the document. Uh, it can be halfway in the design board or outside. If you want to send this to print, if you want to save it, it will print from there. It will save from there. So anything that you have selected it will go to your printer or to your cutter, or it will save. Once you save a document, it will save a whole page. So the artboard is basically used for your design to help you uh, visualize what you're trying to create for your client. Uh, but it's not a constraint. You can use whole workspace to, to design and, uh, and create your documents. This border of course, will not print, it will not output. And uh, if you design in something for a vinyl cutting and you want to use a uh, certain color vinyl, you can even color this board. Uh, the two ways you can approach that. If you're looking into Design Central, we have drop down menu that you can just pick a color. And this artboard will be colored. Again, this will not print. This is just for your. Uh, you know, like your visual design element. Another way to color it, you can even uh, just click on the color chart on the bottom. You can click on the color, drag it, and drop it on your screen, just like this. If you don't need color anymore, you can just click on this little transparent button here, drag that on the screen, drop it, and your artboard uh, will be uh, back to white or transparent area. Now some ask him if uh, we can uh, use this uh, workspace without the artboard. And the, question, the answer is yes. If you look at the Design Central again, you can click on the, this little arrow to expand and give you different options. And you can click on Show Border. If you check that, the artboard is not showing up. And you can use all this uh, design space to work with. I will go back to my border. And you can see it's very small, tiny now. We can use our View menu and uh, click uh, Zoom to Page. Uh, Flexi will automatically zoom to the size of your uh, artboard. Here we go, Zoom to Page. Okay. Uh, another element I would like to talk to you about is a ruler. Okay. On uh, Top and on the left, you see the ruler. Uh, ruler is there all the time by default. You can turn it on and off if you go to View on the main menu. Go to Show and click Show Ruler. Maybe some of you don't care about it. You don't want to display it. But usually when you design and then you're working with the signs, it's helpful to have it there. Uh, again, View, Show. Show ruler. If you look at uh, this is very tiny, but I don't know if you can see it on your screen. When I'm moving the mouse, 
there are a few small dots or lines, dashed lines on the on that ruler. It is showing me where my position is, so I can uh, be designing and drawing objects and say I need something to go all the way to up eight uh, to eight inches, and I can let go. It will kind of visual uh, uh, reference to where my position is, and you can see it on both sides, on the left and the right. By default, uh, ruler is set in inches. But if I right click on it, and you will notice I will be using right click a lot. That's, that's our Flexi context menu. And it would, uh, pretty much anywhere in Flexi, you can right click and you'll have some new options. If you'd like to change your units, you can change it on the flight. I can right click on the ruler. And by default, as I said, is inches. I can go to feet. Now my ruler is in the feet. I can go to decimal inches, millimeters. Now I'm in a metric, and you can see Design Central that it's changing uh, my units to. I can draw object on the screen, just a rectangle, and um, you'll see now my rectangle is in millimeters. If I right click on it, I can go to centimeters, meters, even points. Okay. I'll go back to inches because that is. Most of us here in North America use uh, a lot of our friends in Canada. Some of them work in the metric. Uh, our customers in Europe and the rest of the world, most of the time, are using metric units. You've noticed that 0, 0 uh, by default in Flexi is in this uh, bottom uh, left corner. And that can be changed. Uh, you can see this little icon over here in the corner between those two rulers. You can click on that icon, and you can drag and set that zero, 00 center on the page you'd like. You can use your object. You can use edge of the page. When you drop it, you will see that 0 and 0 are changed now. The default position is bottom left. We can always double click on this little icon, and it will open um, ruler and grid settings. If we need to change our orientation uh, of the page, X and Y, we can change it with the buttons here. Or you can specify uh, where our X and y, y are, because our orientation is set to be a lower left origin. I can always go back to it by typing 0 and 0 over here. And you can see where the zero is now on the bottom and on the top here on the left. Another thing from uh, if you right click on the ruler, you have option to go to go to ruler and uh, grid option. Grid is uh, collection of vertical and horizontal lines that uh, will show on your screen to help you design easier. And let's talk about that right away. Uh, to show grid, you can go to View, Show, and Show Grid. As I said, it will show as a collection of lines on the screen. And uh, a lot of people are using this for a vinyl, uh, for a sign design, for a banner design. Let me show you how you can modify some of the elements of the grid. If we right click on the ruler and go to real ruler and grid option, if I do go to grid, I can change spacing. Right now I'm set to show it every four two inches. I can show it every one inch, horizontal and vertical. I usually want it the same dimension. Click OK. Um, I can set it to any any spacing I want. I'll set it to two inches here and two inches here. I can, uh, yes. So we just had a comment. Some people are having trouble hearing. And if you okay. can turn up the volume just a little bit, that would be great. All right. I will do that. Thanks. And uh, let me know if uh, if you can ask uh, if, if they can hear better now. Yeah. If anyone has any trouble hearing him, let us know on the on the chat window there. Thank you, Christina, for mentioning that. All right. Thank you, guys. I have my mic closer to me now, so uh, I'm sure you'll hear better. So I said, uh, working with the grid, I can go change spacing of the grids. Uh, I can show grids as a dot. You can see it now. 
uh, my experience, most customers will set it to, to show it as lines uh, rather than dots, but that's your personal preference and how you would like uh, to design. We have option to snap object, snap to a grid. If that is checked, when I'm designing something, I'll zoom in to show that a little bit better. So I'm creating a rectangle. It's easy for me to snap that to a grid. If I'm changing the size of it, you can see how almost it's sticky. It just goes to that grid. So I can create objects uh, in exact position, exact size that I want. Even when I'm moving it, you will notice that it's a little bit sticky, and I can just uh, attach and stick it to, to one of those uh, grid lines. Again, working with the grids, uh, you, you can uh, find them by going to View, Show, Show Grid. The next element that it's just continuation of this is your guides. And uh, let's, let me open the grid again. Um, so I can show you how to work with the guides. Guides are element, elements that uh, you can drag. If you just click on the ruler, left click and drag, you will see that you're creating this guideline. If we have our grid on, uh, naturally the guide likes to stick to the grid, but we can leave it anywhere on the screen. And you can do that from the left and from the right hand side. I will turn off the grid for a moment. So view, show, show grid, so we can look at the guides. Guides are there to help us design, and we can create as many guides on the screen as we want. Uh, we can, if we don't need them anymore, we can just select them like any object, right click and select and delete. Um, if I select the grid and I need to rotate it, in a Design Central, I can click on a Rotate option. And we see those little handles, and then I can rotate it under any angle I want. Okay. If I hold Shift key, that will help me uh, constrain that rotate angle every 45 degrees. You see, when I move mouse just a little bit, it will go to 45 degrees, 90 degrees. Um, and, and further. So if I'm designing something that has an angle, using those guidelines and grids is very, very helpful for us. And as I say, you can have as many of those as you want on the screen. Quite often, uh, we might want to create a template, have a document that has some uh, guidelines on a grid. So let's say you're, doing, uh, you're designing something for a customer, and you know, it's always layout. You just have to create uh, different designs, put different pictures. You can put those grids in. And you can even lock it, uh, guides, I apologize. Um, you can select the guide, and you have option to lock. Now when I lock this guide, uh, I cannot move it anymore. I cannot delete it, in, uh, and, 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 and it will stay in all the documents I open. If I want to unlock it, just right-click, go back to lock, unlock it, and then I can go and move it, and delete it, and change it in any way I want. Okay. Let's talk about toolbars. As I say, on the top you have a main toolbar, standard toolbar. Then on the left you have a main toolbar, and uh, you have a view toolbar. Those are main toolbars that show on the screen. But again, let's do right click. Uh, that's our context menu. Anywhere in a toolbar area, if you do right click, you have option to open more toolbars. The ones that are checked have this blue check mark. Those are three that are open. Let's say I'm using with, uh, working with the Align toolbar all the time, and I know I will use it often. I can uh, right, uh, just click on Align, and here's a new toolbar showing. Now I can take that toolbar and position it anywhere I want. I can open as many toolbars as I desire. I now be working a lot with text. I'll use text edit toolbar here as I put it on the screen. This way you can customize your workspace any way you want. Uh, you can move them uh, 
on the side, you can uh, keep them on the screen. And if you don't need it anymore, you can click and just delete it. So, Radisha, uh, we had a question from Amber. I just wanted yes. to know how you anchor the toolbars. So is it okay. just dragging and dropping? And yes. that will keep them wherever you put them? If you, if you look at where my mouse is, you see those little three dots. I like to grab it there. But you can grab it anywhere in this gray area. And you can drag it. It shows you kind of path where you're moving it. Uh, depends on your screen resolution and your video card. Those lines can be uh, bigger or smaller. And if I come here, you see now it's vertical. If I drop it, it's going to stay like this. If I come to the side, see how it's changing to a vertical toolbar? I can drop it right there. And it's going to go to the next uh, position. So I drop it over here. I can pull it out. And I can adjust this one. So you have a full way of customizing this. One thing that it will not do is if you change Flexi window, sometimes you will minimize it. And in order to display your toolbars, Flexi will move them sometimes, like those two on the side. If you maximize your view, um, it will not put it back. It's just not uh, that, that's one part that it will not do it. But it, it, the reason for it is if you scale your window, uh, program still wants you to have all of the toolbars accessible to you. So sometimes you just have to go and uh, move them back manually where you want it. If you look at our toolbars, um, for example, this the object rectangle tool, it has that little carrot over there. We call it carrot, little, uh, little arrow. That means there is more behind it. If you click and hold for a couple seconds, voila. Here is some more. We have more objects. And this can become toolbar on its own. If I'm using my object toolbar uh, all the time, uh, I can, when I click and I hold it, I can just click, hold, and I can drag to the screen. And this is automatically attached to my mouse. Now when I drop it, I have a new toolbar. I can leave it on the screen while I'm designing. If I have a second monitor, I can put it on the second monitor. And it can be always in the second monitor, and my uh, workspace is free. I can dock it again to where I want to. And again, for, for the customer that had a question, I can just take it even on the side. As soon as it turns into that vertical space, I can attach it there. Okay. Okay. It looks like we have another question here about this uh, yes. from Dawn. She asked if you can change that per job. Uh, you, you can change it for every document, but you cannot save it per job. Uh, when you modify workspace, when you put your toolbars wherever you want it, and you see this is the best uh, way to work with it, if you close Flexi at that moment, Flexi, uh, every time you close it, it will remember your workspace you created. Next time you open it, you'll go back to it. Uh, so it is, not, it is possible to save those defaults, but not per document, not per job. If that answers, uh, does that answer the question, Stu? Do you have any? Does does that answer the question, Don? Or yes. Do you have any follow-up yeah. questions for that? Okay. She says that's good. All right. That's good. Thank you. Another thing with the toolbars and the workspace that we're working, I'll touch that briefly. Is uh, if you go to File, you have different workspace options. You can see. Uh, I prefer working in default because that's the most efficient way for me to move through Flexi. But if uh, somebody was using old version of Flexi, like Flexi 7 or maybe um, Gerber Omega Software, if you click on that option, it will see that your workspace will change. Uh, your toolbars look different. They have different, even different icons on it. And especially if you look at the main uh, menu on the top, it's a different from a default. Uh, this is uh, designed to, to help people who use different software switch to Flexi, and maybe they work with Omega and they know the name of the tools. Because every software, every program will have its own name for, for maybe the same tool, but it will, be, have, uh, it will have two different names in different programs. So you can go work through the shapes, layout, select, uh, main menu. Those options are definitely different than what you see in Flexi. Um, I'll go back to Workspace, and if I go back to Default, uh, you will see that my main menu is, is different. Uh, 
so you can you can definitely customize this uh, if you prefer working something that looks it has a more feel of Adobe you can select it now if you look at the main menu that's the biggest difference that you'll notice you have objects type filter while in flexi it's called uh, flex uh, effects or text so the different ter terminology that every program is using I'll go back to default workspace um, which is easier for me to use On the screen here, you see I have a couple of those boxes open all the time. Uh, most important one for me is the Design Central. I will put it on the middle of the screen uh, so you can see it. If you need to open it and it's not open, you can go to View and look at Design Central. Just click on it, it will show or it will disappear. Design Central uh, changes every time you select different tool. If nothing is selected, I can work with my workspace. I will click on the objects and I want to draw a rectangle. You see that it's showing um, properties for that re rectangle to draw. So I can go change the size. I can um, decide what type of uh, corner I want. I can change that property. If I'm working with the text, Design Central is changing now to my uh, character uh, properties. That where I can go and choose different font and if I leave the text tool I have now several tabs uh, this one is for text I can go and change my font all the properties size shape curling for that font so it's a design central is tool that you always want to have open on the screen this will help you uh, navigate smoothly and change your objects and, and design much faster and much more eff uh, efficient um, another thing that Design Central can do is it can be your calculator. Uh, let's say this is, I uh, created this 10 inch rectangle. Let's say I need it to be, I know this is a uh, design that needs to be, you know, two times bigger. I can just type um, times two in Design Central. I click enter and it will change it to uh, 20 inches. Let's say I need it to be 200 or 50 percent to size. I can just type 50 percent into uh, one of those dimension boxes. I hit enter and my object will change uh, 50 percent size. So I can do multiplication, division, addition, uh, all of the basic calculation. So you don't have to open your calculator on your desktop or on your computer. Further so, let's say I'm designing something for a customer and they work in the metrics and they want to design to be um, one meter long or two meters long. I can go online and Google to see what two meter is in inches if I'm used to work in, in imperial units or I can just come here and say I need something to be one meter. I'll just type one M and I hit enter and here's my object. This is exactly one meter. And it's telling me actually what is in the inches, in the, in the units that are default for me. If I go and change this to uh, meters, you'll see it's, uh, it's exactly one meter. So this is a very powerful and a fast tool for, for sign makers. Um, it's made to, again, make you more efficient, work faster, and uh, make less mistakes. Okay. From here, I want to talk about the preferences, about some settings that you can you can uh, set in in Flexi uh, and create some defaults. If you click on Edit and go to Preferences, there you go. It will open our Preference menu. Uh, I will not go into details for every single box here, but there are some that I believe are uh, very very important or uh, interesting to work with uh, maximum number of undo and redo you can change this number and on the new computers you can make it really big that means it will remember this number of steps that you did so default is 50 that means it will remember 50 steps 
uh, you can go 50 steps back. You can change this to 100 or 30. It depends on your computer. The bigger this number is, it will use more memory while it's working. Um, another one is moving distance with arrow keys. I will let me show you what that means. You can set it by pixel or by distance. Let's say I set it to half inch. I'll change it to one inch. Now click OK. If I have object on the screen and I select it, if I tap my arrow keys, it will move it one inch any direction I click, whatever arrow I click. This is good for your layouts and your designs. You can always go back and change it. So it's edit, preferences, and uh, I change it to distance. You can work with pixels. It's something is very, very crucial in dimensions, but usually um, distance work just fine. Save settings on exit. This is checked by default. That means if you modify your toolbars, you put them on the screen wherever you want them, uh, you always want this checked, and it's checked by default. It means when Flexi closes, it will save your settings. It will remember the way you uh, you left it or created it. And Ricky, so will that also yes. save the preferences in Design Central when you close out? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Amber just had a question about that. Great. So Thank I you. I want to make sure that that applied the same. File path. I want to talk about this very first field right here on the top. This checkbox, Update Default Location on Import, Open, or Save, means if this is checked, every time when you go to File, Open, and go to certain folder, Flexi will remember which folder you went to. And next time you go to File and Open, it will go back to that same location. So it will remember which folder you worked from. And that's usually good for everybody or most people. But some people prefer when they go to file open to go to specific directory on their server. If you uncheck this box, now you can go to browse. And you can browse on your computer. Um, say I want to go to desktop and print files. I click OK, this folder. Okay. And if I click OK, every time I go and go to open, it will go to that location. So it will remember that setting. Uh, so difference again between uh, update default location and import is if you uncheck this, you can set specific folder you want it to go every time. If you want it to remember last folder you visited, just check this box and go back to it. Okay. The last is a tools options. Um, I want to talk about a couple of things here. Paste. Auto place, auto place on paste and import. If this is checked, every time a copy and paste object, it will offset it for the number that is specified here in relation to the original object. Let's say I do 5 and 5. 5 inches, 5 inches, and I click OK. If I right click, and I copy, I can right click and paste. See, so this object is now offset 5 inches from the origin of my original document. This can be used for creating repeated layouts if you need to step and repeat something. If that box is not checked, so it's other preferences, paste, this is unchecked. If I need to copy and paste the object, it will be attached to my mouse. Now I can physically position that wherever I want. That's the difference. Okay, I'll go back to Preferences and Tools. Another tool that we can customize is our Select tool. There are a couple ways to go about it. You can go to Edit Preferences, Select Tool, tool and then choose uh, option for drag select by fully enclosing or by touching. The other way you can 
access that same tool is if you double click on our select tool. If I double click on it, it will open preferences for that particular tool. Let me explain the difference between two. By fully enclosing, as if I'm selecting an object or two objects here, I have to fully enclose them in this drag selection box in order for both objects to be selected. If I just go to one object like this, one is fully enclosed, the bottom one is not, it will only select top object. Okay. This is very useful if you have a lot of small objects on your screen. If you have 50 objects, you have a very complicated design, you have to select a particular thing, um, and you drag around and anything you touch is selected. This way you can control what is selected. Again, double click on the object by fully enclosing. If I select by touching, anything that this selection, selection box is touching will get selected. So I don't have to fully enclose it. I can just drag my mouse and select those two, and uh, it will select both objects. So right click, double click on the selection toolbar and select by fully enclosing or by touching. And maybe one more thing for the end. Uh, we have a, a cloud page on the right-hand side. That is very, very, uh, very useful uh, section for different resources. And a lot of time people are asking, how do I close it? Uh, on the top menu right here, you have a little button that says show and hide cloud page. If you click it, it will just uh, minimize it. If you click back on it, it will reopen it. One thing that I want to point a resource and the resources we have this great knowledge base. If you click on it, that will take you to our website. It's called FlexiHelp, SAICloud.com. And this is our new uh, knowledge base. It's like a help menu for Flexi where you can find pretty much everything about Flexi. And this is something I would suggest you 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 bookmark. Uh, so you click on a Flexi base, click on it, it will open it in the browser, minus minimize here. And uh, there you can go and find pretty much everything about Flexi. On the top menu, these are, this, this is most important for me, all the basics are there. Uh, about installation, uh, recommended system requirements, uh, license types, uh, creating account, downloading software, installing software. Uh, a lot of uh, time customer call, they want to move software from one computer to another. Uh, the information is there. You don't have to call uh, technical support. You're welcome to call it, but I don't know, nobody's enjoying calling tech support. Um, moving your license to another computer, you can just click on it and it will go and show you all of the options that are available. It's a very, very smart, simple way to go um, to go about it. Getting started, modules. You want to learn more about the uh, basic program elements like uh, guides, menu preferences, everything we just talked about. You can click on the preferences, and it will open your preference page. There you can go through every menu. It has pretty much explanation on every single box there. And also, you can you can search. See, I will search for ruler, and okay, here is finding everything that's related to ruler. I can click on a ruler in grid, and it will open a page that will tell me everything about the ruler. So everything that is related to designing, printing, cutting, you can pretty much find it on this Flexi Help page. Um, I think that's that covers what uh, we wanted to talk about today. Okay. Um, do we have any questions or anything that I didn't cover that uh, you would like to hear about? Yeah. So we've got a few questions here in the chat window. Don't worry, Brad. I haven't forgotten about you. We'll go ahead and start with some of these. Sure. Our first one here, um, Brad wanted to know if there's a way you can save your favorite fonts instead of searching for them every time. Uh, Save in favorite fonts. Uh, Flexi pretty much sees everything that's in the uh, fonts folder. 
uh, for the uh, for your operating system. So everything that's in the Windows and fonts. Uh, we do not have option to save favorite fonts, unfortunately, or add or remove fonts. I know to Windows, if you go to Windows Fonts folder, you have option to right click on any font and tell it to show or not to show. I know a lot of customers, a lot of us have a lot of uh, fonts on their computer. And sometimes we're talking about thousands, and it's very, very hard to uh, go and search the font. So we do not have that option, but that's a great idea. We can take a look at it. I would suggest maybe looking into uh, some type of font manager that you can install on a computer. It's a little application that can manage you, uh, let you manage a uh, big number of fonts better. Okay. Brian also commented, he said, to save favorites, use text styles. Yes, text styles is one option, yes. And, and text styles, it's a little bit different uh, lecture. I think we already covered that. There is, uh, if you go to our YouTube channel, you'll be able to find it, yes. Uh, but the text styles, you can, uh, you can create your, uh, if you have, for example, 10 different uh, text styles, uh, sizes, and fonts that you use, and you can save it. And every time you type, you can go to your text styles and, and apply, uh, apply those uh, smart objects. Okay, here. thank you. Also, uh, Don and Paul will be, we are recording this, so we'll upload this to our YouTube channel so you'll be able to, to view this anytime. Okay, next question we hear, Brad asks, can you show us how to show mask out a photo or image while designing a wrap on a van so the client can see it? Design the mask. Let's see if I uh, let me import an image and uh, see if I am. Uh, uh, can you can you read the question again, Stuart? Yeah. It says, can you show us how to show mask out a photo or image? while designing a wrap on a van so the client can see it. Oh, let's see if I we'll, – we'll create something here. So when we're talking uh, about masks, um, if I have a picture like this, I can put object, vector object on top of that picture. And if I select both of those, I can right-click, go to Mask option. And this will mask uh, whatever I have uh, in that object. I can still uh, maybe let's let's do something maybe that you can see better. I'll design object. I'll create a star on it. Um, that's not a star. So I have a vector object on top of my picture. If I select both of those objects at the same time, I can right-click on it and it will uh, go to mask. Now, only part of the picture that is underneath this uh, star will show. Um, I should be able to go to my select within options. And if I select the picture, I can move it. Uh, I don't know if this is what we're looking uh, for. So in my selection tool, I have two tools. If I click and hold, and I can drag this in the menu, the second one is select within tool. If I use this first tool to select it, when I select it, I can move the object as a whole. If I use select within tool, I can click on uh, mouse over the object. It will show me what am I selecting. Say bitmap, I can click. Now I can move that object. Uh, independent from the mask. Um, I don't know if this is what we're looking for. So uh, it looks like not, he's maybe we can do uh, has a clarification maybe we can do, here. Yeah. Uh, he just said, uh, sorry, I probably didn't explain it properly, but like taking an image of a van and masking artwork onto the van, so they okay. can see what it'll, it'll look like. Okay. Uh, that's uh, uh, you can do that using a uh, bad wrap. Um, uh, can you ask Stuart if they're familiar with the bad wrap? Yeah, have you used what kind of templates? 
students. Yeah, those, okay, uh, in order that, to uh, do that, they have to be uh, those uh, TIFF bad rap templates. And uh, if they want, we can take a number. Maybe we can do a uh, remote session so I can show them working with the bitmaps, uh, bad, uh, bad rap templates. Uh, there are different uh, vehicle templates. They're based on the vector. Um, those are not that uh, user-friendly for masking. Uh, bad rap has created their files in such a way that it has layers that you can superimpose your object, and it will mask it. Uh, so it, you know, the picture is not showing over the headlamps or doorknobs or anything like that. I think that's what right. they're looking for. Yeah, and maybe we can so, do a separate remote session to show that um, how it's yeah, done. Yeah, so Brad, if you want to, to send an email to our, our tech support team, they can set up a time to remote into your computer and go over the process with you so that you can yeah. get that, that answer. Yeah, remind me. Russ, it, Russ remind has also offered his help there with okay, his phone cool. number. Yeah, no, no, that's a, uh, something that a lot of people are looking to do. So we want to make sure that we cover that. Maybe we yeah, can schedule it's worth training a similar in the way. future, Adisha, to go over that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, bad rap. Okay, so we have another question here from Rick. It says, how do you save desktop preferences so that it shows in the preference manager? Desktop preferences. Uh, preference manager, uh, let's touch base preference manager. I will need to close it. Uh, when you save option in Preference Manager, and Preference Manager, when you install Flexi, you have all those options. You have a Flexi sign, you have Install Manager, License Manager, and one of the options is Preference Manager. Once you set your workspace, once you set your printers, your cutters, all of the basic design and options, uh, you can go and open Preference Manager, and you can uh, save it. Okay, Click Save. To give it a name, okay. And you click OK, and that that will save your preferences. Uh, you can use factory defaults. If you use factory defaults, it will reset everything back to the way it was installed. So I can always load my factory defaults, and if I open Flexi, everything will go back to default. If anything was changed or deleted, I can go back to my custom. And I can open Preference Manager, and I can select this option and click Load, and it should reload everything uh, I saved at that moment. So it will be like a snapshot of the program at that and that particular moment. Okay. So this is back to defaults because uh, I loaded uh, my default settings. Okay. All right. So we're. We're running short on time here, but we're going to try and answer as many of these questions as we can. All right, let's be quick. Uh, we have a couple people who have a question about rounding square corners. Uh, let me just find the question. Here, someone mentioned that when they round square corners, it looks different than when they round rectangles corners. And someone else mentioned that uh, the square corners always show up as beveled. As, uh, so one thing with the corners, if you are creating rounded corners, okay, and we can see, we can look at the preferences, like restoring factory defaults can fix maybe some of those issues. I've created a rectangle here, and if I want to change uh, round the corners, it doesn't matter if it's a rectangle or square, the corners should have same radius. But if I go and after I created my uh, rounded corners, if I go and try to stretch it or change dimension, you will see that it's stretching that radius. So radius will not change if you manually adjusting the size of the object. So I suggest every time you want to have a, a rounded corners, uh, go first, create your rectangle, the size you want it to be uh, when you're designing it, either by dragging it or creating numbers, and then go and change uh, your uh, round the corners. So you want to change it. So every time you're creating that, and this is what happened, I changed that rectangle size manually. So you want to go and first create that object. So let's say I need 10 by 10. I will create 10 by 10 or 10 by 15. 
I click on the screen, it will create 10 by 15 right away. Now my corners will stay uh, with the same radius. But as soon as I go and try to manually stretch this, you can notice that it is changing this. So I suggest you create your rectangle or your object, the size you want it to be, and then go and change properties of it. Okay, okay, perfect. That we answer. So, okay. Yeah, looks like we've got time for just a couple more questions. Sorry, folks, I don't think we're going to be able to get to all of them, but let me see if we can answer just a couple more before we let you go for the day. Um, Colin asks, when using gradients, can Flexi transition from full opacity color to a zero opacity like other programs? Not yet. Unfortunately, no. What he's, uh, Colin is asking, uh, it always has to have something on the ad. Uh, it doesn't go from uh, uh, trans from zero color uh, to, to from no color to a color. Uh, if you set it to zero, that end that is set to zero will be replaced by white. That's something we definitely are looking into adding. Okay. And Radish is the project manager for Flexi, so he's the one to talk to about new features like that. So we've got, let's just do one more question here. Claudette has two questions. She says, do you have a general right, recommendation Claudette. for importing Adobe files, like PSD, PDF, EPS, or color space? I, I recommend everybody to, I use three, color, two, three, three file types. Uh, color space, uh, color doesn't matter. Uh, you want to do either PDF or EPS for vector files, and if you're working with the with the bitmap images, I prefer TIFF file, especially if you're going to print raster image. TIFF is by far uh, the best in quality, has the least amount of compression. The file size is much bigger, uh, but if you go to JPEG, JPEG has a lot of compression, and the only way you can compress image if you take away quality from it. Um, Flexi doesn't have a preferred color space if you save your file as an RGB, it should open as an RGB. If you save it as a CMYK, it should open as a CMYK. Uh, so call that PDF, EPS, and when it comes to the raster, um, TIFF file. Okay, and she also asks, what is the most efficient way to get a file from Corel or Adobe Workspace into Flexi Project Manager, Production Manager? Production manager. Uh, again, from Corel Draw, I would definitely save it as an EPS or PDF unless you want to work with the raster as a TIFF. Uh, so those three formats are becoming, you know, when it comes to the vector EPS, PDF, it's becoming uh, very, very uh, standardized. Uh, I would not, I would not suggest using Corel Draw file to bring it in production manager. You can do that, but uh, again, PDF, EPS, and for raster TIFF, it would apply from Adobe to, to, to uh, CorelDRAW or any other design application. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Radisha, for going through all that. Thank you, everyone, for, for attending today and for all your wonderful questions. I know we still have a few more, so if we didn't get to yours, please write it down. We'll be having another webinar next month so we can make sure we get to those questions. Or if you need some more urgent help, uh, go ahead and email our tech support team, and they'd be happy to help you with that, and Radisha can point them in the right direction if it was a specific question for him. Uh, for example, Lisa, I know you had some questions about color matching, and we do have several other webinars and training videos available on the SAI YouTube channel, so I encourage you to go look at those videos. Like I mentioned, we are recording this one, so we'll post this up on YouTube as well so that you can go over it any time that you like. And if I may add, uh, uh, Stu, uh, thank you everybody for uh, uh, listening to us and watching this. Uh, if you want to see our YouTube videos on our YouTube channel, again, from the cloud page, you have a direct link. If you click on the YouTube, it will open the uh, SAI YouTube channel where you can go and search through all of the webinars we created. Uh, you can go to playlist and see everything that we have done recently. There are hundreds of videos there uh, that uh, are very, very helpful. Yeah, feel free to look at those anytime you want. All right, folks, thank you so much. We'll see you next month. Goodbye. Thank you.